Mm. I, I've, I've just learned, I've learned that the goal of our life is to, that we're going to be formed by something. Nobody is unformed. Everybody is being formed or deformed in any given moment. And, um, and so I want to sort of be conscious and pay attention and focus, focus on my actual formation. So yeah, I learned, I learned about my own sin. I, I learned that there's huge gaps in my natural development. And many of those were actually filled in by walking my son through these things that I was never walked through. And here's what I learned, man. Fatherhood is one of the greatest gifts on earth. You are listening to the Famous at Home podcast with Dr. Josh and Christy Straub. Because when it's all said and done, we all want to know that we were famous at home. Welcome back to the Famous at Home podcast. Today, we have a very insightful interview. Before we jump into that, here is a word from our sponsors. Hey everybody, Josh Straub here with Famous at Home. We want to introduce you to the Famous at Home Starter Bundle. This is something we created just for you. All you have to do is click the button to sign up to receive our, our workbook, Seven Decisions to Putting Your Family Center Stage. You'll also get a feelings chart handout that you can implement with your kids and with your spouse. And you'll also receive the 100 Commonly Held Values Worksheet so that you can sit down with your family and discuss the values that you want to set as a family that will provide vision for how and you want to lead your family in the direction that you're going to head in. So you get those three things right away as soon as you sign up. In addition to that, we will send to you our top podcast episodes on marriage, parenting, and family, the, the most listened to and the most foundational for developing emotional connection with your loved ones. You'll also receive past newsletters, our exclusive weekly newsletter. You'll be enrolled to receive that on an ongoing basis. These are real-time newsletters of what's happening in our lives and what we're doing and implementing to be famous at home that we want to give to you just weekly nuggets to keep us, uh, to keep us uh, equipped uh, every single week. And then you'll also receive the weekly podcast episodes as well. This starter bundle is all free. We want to give it to you. Just click the link to sign up. Welcome back. Okay, so the last couple of weeks we had Christy. I was interviewing my wife, Christy, on motherhood, her healing journey, and just uh, she's shared so many incredible nuggets of wisdom about her own journey, and so many of you resonated with that so much, and I, I just heard, I it was the most uh, comments I think we've ever gotten off of any episodes of please do a series with Christy, please do a series with Christy. I resonate with this so much. So you've asked, we will, we will answer. Okay. So we are going to do a series with Christy. We're going to plan for it. It will come a little bit later this summer and we are going to go ahead. And so we did a two part interview where I interviewed Christy. We're going to do more of that. Uh, it sounds like you guys want that. And so thank you for sharing that. Uh, any feedback you guys have on the podcast, please let us know. I actually even want to say, hey, listen, go and leave us a review. Uh, the more re reviews, uh, that's how people find out about the podcast. It's how they um, decide if they want to take a listen. And so we would love for you. I think I, last I, I looked, we were just shy of 600 reviews on, on Apple Podcasts. We'd love for you guys to go and just do us a favor and just uh, review it for us and let's try to drive that up. But also your comments, your feedback, you can go to famousathome.com slash podcast, give us questions that you have, um, give us your feedback. We we love it. And, and also topics that you would love for us to talk about on the podcast in the future. I just want to come on and say, we are going to do another series with Christy and we'll go even deeper. If there's things you would like her to talk about, please jump on, email us, let us know. We will definitely ask her those questions. This week, we're starting a mini series on fatherhood. Uh, Father's Day is coming up. Uh, today, we have a great friend on the podcast, Pastor John Tyson. He is the founder of the Primal Path. He's also the pastor of uh, Church of the City, New York. And he's a friend. He's a... Um, he, he, he's, he's somebody that I look up to in a lot of ways. Uh, the way that he raised his kids is just, um, uh, it's, it's something we, we all, I think, want to model after. Uh, at the same time, he's also not shy in sharing where he's messed up and what he could be doing, what he could have done better. And so I just, I'm excited to, for you to listen to this episode today with uh, my friend, John Tyson. Uh, he's one of those guys who just consumes content 
and he he just spits out these nuggets of wisdom um, that are so powerful. And so uh, whether you are a dad, whether you um, are a mom, uh, moms, you're going to receive so much wisdom in this too. And if you're a son or a daughter, you know, the, he, he talks about what it was like for him as a son as well. And I think uh, there's so much wisdom that he has in this episode that you can glean from no matter what season of life you're in or what role you're currently playing in your family. So much wisdom in this. So without further ado, listen in with my friend, Pastor John Tyson. All right. Welcome back to the Famous at Home podcast. Today, I have a friend, a pastor, and just a delight of a human, somebody who's challenged me uh, over these last few years in my own fatherhood, uh, being a dad, what it looks like to show up intentionally uh, for my kids, uh, particularly for my son, uh, in particular with this situation that we're going to talk about today. But um, Pastor John Tyson is joining us. John, thank you so much for joining us. Mate, it is good to be back with you again. Did you call me a delightful human? You're a delightful that may, human. I, that may be the best intro I've ever had. Thank it. you. You really are. I, I enjoy being with you. Uh, since. So John has been on the podcast before. He's been on a few years ago. Some of you, uh, in fact, we've gotten lots of feedback on that episode. We're going to uh, talk more specifically because Primal Path, which is what you created with your son, Nathan, that has uh, since evolved into something even more yes. awesome, which I want to talk about uh, but, but I think the, the delight for me is when I call you a delightful human is because as you know, those of you listening, like the people that we have on our podcast are people that we know that we love, that we trust and who we have seen just be the real deal. And you are one of those people. You are a delight because you live the message, you live the word of God. And so that's, I mean, it challenges me every day. And, and by the way, for, uh, for those of you listening, if you have not subscribed to John's weekly emails, I highly, I forward these to people all the time, sign up for them every single week. He's putting just gold nuggets into my email inbox that are challenging me in being a husband and a dad, in particular being a dad. But John, I would love for you to start just describing, uh, I, I know we've talked about this before, but I would love for you to reorient our audience. And for those who are new listeners joining in for the first time, love for you to just describe where the primal path came from. What, what, what started this whole journey for you? And also, what is it? Okay, well, mate, I would love to. Um, I, I think a lot of this was born. I got married young and um, I was a dad at 23, had my first son at 23. Which uh, in the south where I was is is very very normal. Uh, I've been in New York City for eighteen years, and I have friends my age having babies. I'm forty six. So uh, let's, back then, let's just uh, yeah. hold on a minute. Let's just time out because I'm I'll be forty four this yes. year. You're forty six. We we've talked about this. You're you're in the empty nest years. Uh, you've entered or entering into them, and and I know oh, I'm I'm well into it. You're yes. well into it, and I've got a three year old here at home. So and <laughs> which is just it's it's just awesome. Well, I do miss them. I, I look forward to grandkids soon, hopefully. I love it. I love um, it. Yeah, but I did get married young, and I just felt like, man, I don't have the tools mm. to, to know how to raise my son properly. My dad did as good a job as he could, but he had a very, very uh, absent father. And um, so I just had this sort of sense of panic, which is, you know, wow, I do not want to screw this kid's life up. So that started me on this um, deep, deep journey to ask the question. I mean, so people throw around Bible verses, you know, like, uh, train up a child in the way that he should go. And I was like, what is what is that way exactly? And how do you train them? Right. That's so generic. What did that mean? And um, and then verses like, you know, uh, fathers don't exasperate your children, um, raise them in the knowledge and instruction of the Lord. Well, what exactly about God do they need to know? What does it mean to instruct them? So I was, I was aware of the responsibility, but I wasn't aware of the tools or the pathway for how to do it. So I did a bunch of research and basically found out that in almost every society, there had been a, a in almost um, anthropologists have discovered that in universal societies around the world and at different times, almost like they were given a divine code, they all had a pathway to help their sons as soon as they started hitting adolescence to walk through the turbulent adolescent years into adulthood. And that we, for the most part, had completely lost that in our society. So I sort of researched um, what other societies did, realized they had basically a, a pretty, pretty, a very, very similar six-step process uh, of what would happen when a young man would hit puberty. 
And uh, I basically researched that, recovered that, built that out, and then took my son through it for a process of uh, five years. And uh, so that's so, so it came from the promo path came from a desire to pass on generational blessing and not generational brokenness. The idea of it was basically saying someone's going to have thought of this before, doing a bunch of research, realizing there was a need and an opportunity based what was missing at this time of history, and then seeking to rebuild that. So the primal path is an intentional formation pathway from adolescence into adulthood, primarily for young men to help them walk, uh, to figure out what to do with their male energy, um, who to become in a world like ours. And then giving them the character, knowledge, skills to be able to function well as adults in the world. So that's what it is. It's a five-year journey, adolescence and adulthood, walking through that path. I absolutely love it. We have a a, a ten-year-old. He's going to be eleven this year. We've been, you know, I've been starting to to enter into this. So would you say? And and for those of you listening, uh, the Primal Path Discipleship Program is starting up. I would love for you to describe where they can sign up for that. Like let's let's like I. I want as many people, as many dads to be entering into this space as possible because I just think as as a as a Christian as a dad, I want I think we as 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 Christian dads should be leading the way. We should be that that spear uh, on the arrow, right? Like we are we are leading the way in terms of discipling our sons um, to experience God's purpose and meaning for their lives. And this program, there's nothing else out there like it. I would love for you to just tell them here at the front end of the episode where to go, what what can they expect, and at what age should would you recommend they begin this? Well, I think I mean I love the I love the name of what you're doing here. I mean you sh- you should be building into your kids from day one, period. But when anthropologists sort of research male formation in in primal societies, it's somewhere around the age of thirteen. I mean, so, um, you know, th- there's something seems to happen biologically, you know, puberty hits, you've got testosterone flooding the system, you're getting physically stronger, you're beginning to differentiate, you move through a, a zone of challenge where you want to sort of be- test yourself, test yourself against your peers. Um, you're more open, uh, you're, you're an, an awareness of your deficit in terms of skill and a desire to grow in them. And that sort of happens, kicks off around the age of 13. So, um, so that's when it starts. That's when I recommend starting it sometime around the uh, 13th birthday. And uh, the, the Primal Path Discipleship Program, I wrote a book called The Intentional Father. The Intentional Father was sort of the blueprint of how to do this. So it was a story and narrative about what I did with my son and what other societies have done. Um, and the number one piece of feedback I got in that book was, great, thank you for the blueprint. What do you do every day to build this out? And I realized... There was almost no five-year like actual curriculum to help boys walk from adolescence into manhood. So uh, the Prime Path of Subship program is five devotions a week, like spending the mornings together between 15 and 20 minutes. Uh, the first year takes them through the five shifts from adolescence into manhood, the five things every boy has to psychologically and emotionally let go of in order to progress into manhood. So you get five daily devotions. The first year studies the lives of five men in the Bible. Um, Then uh, you get a weekly man school challenge. And this is just like something to do with your son to bond with him. I also put like a supplemental movie in there if you're super busy. Hey, like watch this with him. This will sort of teach the lesson. And then at the end of every 10 weeks, there's five over 50 weeks, You have a difficulty day, and the difficulty day is a challenge they have to do to prove that they have uh, understood the shift from the previous uh, material so that they can then get rewarded the graduation from that difficulty day. We've got, uh, we use military patches, so you earn these patches. The first one is from ease to difficulty. Boys want ease, men embrace difficulty. That's a study of the life, life of Joseph. Uh, Joseph went from his father's favored son with a special coat. Uh, and then went through the most hellacious drama to end up uh, embracing the difficulty, being willing to say what you meant for evil, God meant for good, for the saving of the lives of many. Ten shifts happen in the life of Joseph to get him ready for that. So they recap those ten shifts, and um, and then you earn that patch. So yeah, it basically, it's it's almost like, hey, I want, and and I, I love what you're talking about because my goal is for you to be the hero in this story. All I'm doing is giving busy dads who don't have time, that have a heart, Mm. the tools 
So I'm not telling personal stories. There's none of this content is centered around me. Sadly, I don't even write with an Australian accent. This is all just resources <laughs> for dads to use with their sons so that they have a shared um, thread together to build a relationship. And uh, so, yeah, we've got about, we've had, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dads who've gone through it at this point. And um, it's the, the feedback's been really, really remarkable. It's just a tool for dads who have a heart but don't know how to grasp onto something and then just execute. And I, I think I was asking a bit much in the book, like, hey, to, so, uh, to say to a dad, well, your son should, you know, learn about the life of David. Which dad has time to write uh, 50 devotions and a 10-week study mm. showing the key elements your son needs to learn from the life of David? Well, the answer <laughs> is no one does, man. Yeah. So anyway, as the beauty of being an empty nester is that I got time in my hand and this is, I sense a call of God to do this. Well, and you- it was like an assignment. So I've gone ahead and done all that for dads. And, that, and that's exactly you're also gifted in it. I mean, you are a content wizard. I mean, you, the way that you consume content, the things that you remember. You, you I'm a remember- little grieved by that. I wish you'd call me a content delight that I'll take. Con- with <laughs> you're, a, I'll change your content delight. Like it's true because yeah. you take content and you synthesize down. I was talking to somebody at church the other day about you, somebody who was in your uh, youth group uh, well, g- growing up, uh, he, you were his youth pastor and I had just gotten back from New York after being with you. And I was, we were sharing what we were up to. And I said, Hey, I just got back from this thing. And, and he was describing you. And one of the things that he, he, he mentioned was your ability to be able to take content. First of all, he said, I, I have to say this, that you are a godly man. And, and so to hear this from one of your former youth, uh, youth that you led as a youth pastor is, is just awesome that you're a godly man, but that your ability, we were, we were talking about your ability to be able to synthesize content from the secret place. You know, there's something about as a man being in relationship with Jesus, where we are living in the secret place, where we're spending time with him in prayer, where we're reading mm-hmm. and consuming and learning what he would have for us. And it's almost like you have done all of this study. You've done, you have spent time in the secret place all of these years. You were executing it behind the scenes with your kids, uh, with your daughter, with your son, because you did it with your daughter as well. Your ability to be able to do that in the secret place. And now here you are. And it's like God has platformed you in this hour as a calling to be able to do this. And he's also gifted you with the ability to be able to recall all of this content and and put it in the hands of, of busy dads. Uh, throughout throughout culture, and so I just want to bless you in that. I just want to thank you for that. That that's what I mean by you being a delight. Like this is not just, um, and I, I don't want to just spend the whole episode like pumping up your tires. Although I know you you'll, you'll take it. I just want people to hear the work that goes in behind the scenes. And I think for all of us as dads, we need to be living in the secret place as well. This isn't just about you know riding the coattails of someone else who's living in that place. I hope that you see the primal path as an opportunity for you as a dad to be able to enter into the secret place. Because as, as John said, this isn't about him. This is about you being the hero. And yes. we become the hero when we spend time. Jesus is the ultimate hero. And we become even we become the hero because we're spending time in him. It's in his presence that we are given the authority and the anointing to be able to pour into our kids. It's out of that overflow. Otherwise, we just enter into a relationship with our kids exhausted. Oh, I agree. I think you, you make a great point, which I, which is something I, I don't think a lot of people have consciously processed. Um, you know, I'm from a Pentecostal background. Um, I'm all about the gifts of the spirit. I'm about tongues, prophecy, healing. I love all that stuff, man. But um, quite often we take those passages out of context. Ephesians 5, which says uh, that we're commanded to be filled with the spirit. So that's in Ephesians 5. And then it goes into marriage, workplace, and parenting. So the immediate place of application is not like, go to church and, you know, have a glory portal. The immediate thing is like, now that you're filled with the Spirit, love your wife properly, treat the people in your household well, and raise your kids in the things of God. So that that filling of the Spirit should be Spirit-filled parenting more than than anything else. That exhortation to be filled with the Spirit is to have a Spirit-filled home. You're not alone in parenting your kids. Amen. Why relegate spiritual gifts just to some church service? 
Amen. You know, God wants to help you. He wants to give you insight, words of knowledge about your kid's heart, um, prophetic words about their future, keys and understanding to who they are in the kingdom, why they were entrusted to you. So I always want to encourage people. Yeah, I, I do want my country to come from the secret place. Um, but I think in some sense, all of our parenting is has a spiritual component to it. It's not just principles. It's the power of God showing up in the home. So take heart. You're not alone, on your own. Yeah. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you and you'll find that grace. It's so good. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, I'm going to ask John some more questions about how you can enter into your kid's world and what this uh, primal path looks like. Here's a word from our sponsors. Hey everybody, Josh Drop here with Famous at Home. I want to introduce you to something if you haven't uh, already seen it. This is our new book, Famous at Home, Seven Decisions to Putting Your Family Center Stage in a World Competing for Your Time, Attention, and Identity. When a couple or a family comes to us and says, hey, Josh, we have a question. What do we do next? We always point to this book. This is our coaching playbook. These, This is the play-by-play -play strategies that we use to help families to be famous at home. And so if you have not picked up this book yet, we highly encourage you to get a copy. You can see a link in the show notes. You can click a link right here uh, in the video. And we would love to, for you to be able to get a copy of this in your hands. If you want to go deeper uh, than the podcast episodes, this is the way to do that. It's our way of walking alongside your family to help you be famous at home. All right, so John, we're back and we've talked about the primal path, uh, the intentional father. We're going to uh, put those in the show notes. I uh, really encourage you all to take a look at those. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us, email us. Uh, and if we need to, we'll get you in touch with them. But uh, would really love for you to to join this journey. I'm I'm kind of jealous because I'm not ready to join the journey yet. Uh, we're still a little bit so behind, but, but we're getting there. And uh, John, I would love for you to give... Um, we have a lot of moms listening, a lot of women listening to our podcast yeah. who, who have husbands at home. And, you know, I would, I'm assuming you're going to say, Hey, husband, you need to listen to this episode. This is an episode to be good. If you're a dad listeners, I would just love for you to encourage what is the lowest hanging fruit? Cause in your book, you talk about moving in stages of fatherhood and it takes a it, it does take a lot to move to the intentional father. And most of us were not given this from our own fathers, right? Like we, yes. this wasn't handed to us. Where do you encourage us to start? What's the lowest hanging fruit? The lowest hanging fruit is for you to pray for your kids. Hmm. The absolute lowest hanging fruit is three minutes of prayer for your kids a day. Father, I just pray for my son, Nathan. I pray that you would give him a heart for you. I pray that you would help him make wise friends. Lord, give him a vision to be a man of wisdom, not a fool. Lord, I pray that you will protect him from uh, the, the temptations of his aging world. Draw him deeper into the heart of Jesus. Lord, I pray, give me a great relationship with him. Amen. You know, I mean, just like short, short little prayers. Um I think that's the lowest hanging fruit. The second lowest hanging fruit would be asking good questions, being present with your kids. Put your phone down and uh, be present with your kids and then just just observe them. You know, listen to what they're saying. Do you, do, you, do you hear strain in their voice? Do you hear them repeatedly keep talking about a certain teacher? Maybe that's an area of passion or an area of joy in their life. Um, are, they, are they dismissive? Or, you know, like just pay, pay attention to your kids, those tiny imperceptible details. Um and then try and go in, ask, you know, a little bit more open-ended questions. Um, there's so many great resources out there on like how to ask your kids better questions. Like how was school? It's like sucky. Fine. I wish I didn't have to go, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. It's like, Fine. just get good at asking. You can parent through very, very uh, good place questions. And, um, and then, yeah, it's so, like, I would start up from there, like spending, you know, repeated intentional time with them once a week is ideal if you can't do once a week um once every other week if you can't do that once a month but just like sacred time together where they realize you're there for them this is not you trying to not even you trying to disciple them this is you just saying i'm here to enter into your world to do what you love to spend time with you because i care about you and i mean if you i'm not sure how much i got right but I know I did get that right. I just created spaces where I was like, this is your time, man. What do you want to do together? Bring me into your world. And 
what what fun traditions can we create? And um, man, I've made so many mistakes. I've hurt my kids. I've had to repent a lot. I've had to ask for forgiveness. I've had to follow up. Um, I've had to change my tone a lot. But I, I will tell you this. My daughter just came back from college and um, we went to do a catch-up day, which is like, hey, let's just go, you know, mm. let's go get coffee and then walk around and just catch up. And we were talking about friendships and we got on the topic of an emotional field, which I've written about before and a lot of people have talked about, which in essence is like, what does it feel like to be in your presence? And a lot of times parents take the worst of the world and project their stress into their kids. And the kids just don't need that. It's not their fault. It's not their responsibility. It's not their time. And um, I always worked, didn't always get it right, but I really learned to, to shut off all of the stress of my life and have a great emotional field where my kids would want to be around me. Dad's going to be a man of joy. Dad's going to show up with a full heart. Dad's going to laugh. And uh, so I was talking to my daughter and um, I said, it wasn't compliment fishing at all. I was like, what's my emotional field? What's it like to be around you? And dude, what she said, it just made me weep. She said, to be around you is to experience comfort and to be around you is to experience joy. That's what it's like being in your presence. Dude, I was like, wow. that was such a statement of grace for my 20-year-old college student. I was like, I'm not sure I've earned that, but it might be the accumulated grace of close to 20 years of just, how are you doing? How can I support you? What's going on? What do you need from me? I'm here to cheer you on, not here to lecture you. I'm not here to beat you down. And um, I think you can just start with there. Just build those small, repeatable traditions where your heart's empty, your phone's away, the stress is gone, and you just give them the gift of presence. You listen, you observe, you value, you encourage. That's my definition of love, L-O-V-E. You listen, observe, value, encourage. And, um, and then you just stay the course with that. You go on the journey with them, and uh, you walk alongside them. And, um, yeah, I think that's low hanging fruit, but it's potent fruit. And I think if done consistent, so I, I've shared this before, I'm about consistency, not intensity. I think it is, there's no formation without repetition. It's those small daily things that compound over time that create the culture of a home, build the strength of a relationship, those sorts of things. So I just would encourage parents to do that. When my kids were two, I would t take my son to Waffle House. And I would take my daughter to Einstein Bagel. I mean, it was just a little bit. We just kept that up, kept that up, kept that up uh, over the course of time. And anyone can do that. It means more to your kids than you can comprehend. What may be 30 minutes of a free window for you may be the greatest time ever. Um, so I think that's very, very important that they feel prioritized and special. One last comment here because I've never given a short answer in my life. <laughs> this is um, fantastic. I was reading, reading a, a, a poet recently, uh, David White, and uh, he, he talked about the most devastating thing that can ever happen for a child. And here's what he says it is. It's when your child comes to realize that all they are is another thing on a list that has to be checked off that you have to do as an adult. So there's nothing more devastating for a kid to realize, oh, I should spend time with my kid. I spent time with my kid. Wow. And I think there's so many, when a kid has that realization, I think they just, I think it crushes their spirit. So how do you say, I'm prioritizing this time, not because I'm checking this off, because this is the highlight of my week that I've been waiting for. Oh. And if kids feel just a little bit of creativity, a little bit of delight, I think that could just go an extraordinarily long way. Oh. There's so much wisdom packed in that that answer, long answer, which I love, just keep going, like just talk, I, I don't have to. It's, it, I want to just go back and highlight something that you said that I think deserves more than the, the quick piece that you gave it, which is your definition of love. Listen, observe, value, and encourage. I got that? Yes. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. That, that, to me, I think, that, to me, it's James 1, 19 and 20 right? Be quick to listen, slow yeah. to speak, slow to become angry because yep. human anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. And I think so often yep. when our kids are a to -do, on our to-do list, as opposed to being the delight of our eyes, we tend to react in anger when they're annoying us, right? And it's like, there's our anger, there's our not being quick to listen. And so our heart posture 
is everything and seeing them. I would love, you talked about ways that you had to repent. You talked about your own journey through the years. What was, as you took Nathan through the primal path, as you were doing this, as you were on this journey, I just know as a dad, there's so often that I feel like, man, I'm not getting it right. I wish I would have done this differently. I wish I would have done that differently. What did you learn about yourself through those years? Um, so one of the number one pieces of feedback, you, you, uh, so we were together a couple of weeks ago at a forming men event. And that's basically what I learned is that I was an unformed man wow. and I needed someone wow. to take me through the primal path, but there was nobody available to do it. Mm -hmm. And the reason we actually started doing men's ministry was a request from dad saying, no one took me through this. And uh, so that sort of blossomed as an adjacent thing. Uh, what I, what I realized was, um, well, let, let me just tell you a little story. Okay. Love I'll tell it. you a little story. Love it. I, I had just walked. I, I, it's, it's the last day of a 500 mile hike across Spain. I've got blisters on my feet that are literally so sore that they're down to the bone. And nurses on Instagram are commenting saying, go to a hospital, you're damaging your feet. Um, I have I have a mile to go walking my son from from France all the way across Spain, uh, finishing the Camino de Santiago. Love it. And this is the conclusion of this primal path journey that we've been on. And I just have this rage at my son that as I'm coming in, and it's just a violent rage. I want to like it's I just it overtook me almost like a demonic presence. I was like, why am I angry? Just freaking rage, just rage. And I realized that what I what I was sad about was after I'd done this for my son and we were getting ready to close this journey out, that I had about 40 plus years of pent up grief that nobody had taken me on a similar journey. And it actually oh. wasn't about my son at all. It was just like, why couldn't someone do this for me? Was there not a leader that valued me? It was like, how hard is it to just, you know, I was just, I just was grieved. I think I was actually getting in touch with suppressed grief. And as this journey was ending with my son and realizing that every ounce of effort was absolutely worth it, I was grieved that no one had done this for me. There's a real sense of wounding there. So what I learned is how unformed and undiscipled I actually was, though I've had some great mentors. Um, I've learned that if I'm paying attention, God is trying to do this for me, you know? So at the, in, uh, in the city where the Camino ends, um, I was sitting down smoking a celebratory cigar, okay? A Cuban cigar with a cappuccino, with actually a cafe con, cafe con leche. I've got my shoes off. My feet are badly damaged. And I'm just sitting next to the church at the end of this pilgrimage. And I feel God say to me, if you're paying attention, I have been fathering you the whole time. And I look up and I'm sitting under a, a sign, uh, Via Sacra, which means you know the holy road. And I felt God say to me, your son has been on the primal path, but you have been on a holy road with me your whole life. And I felt God give me this almost like a New Testament vision of like, here's all the moments where his hand was in, it was behind the scenes, but it was as intentional as I had been with my son in my whole life. I'm from another country. And when did I end up in New York City? How did like, I've had this extraordinary life and it's all been the kindness and fatherhood of God. And um, so, yeah, I, I learned that I've been undiscipled in the natural and better discipled in the supernatural than I was ever aware of. Um, mm. I, I've, I've just learned, I've learned that the goal of our life is to, that we're going to be formed by something. Nobody is unformed. Everybody is being formed or deformed in any given moment. And um, and so I want to sort of be conscious and pay attention and focus focus on my actual formation. So yeah, I learned I learned about my own sin. I, I learned that there's huge gaps in my natural development. And many of those were actually filled in by walking my son through these things that I was never walked through. And here's what I learned, man. Fatherhood is one of the greatest gifts on earth. And the way I hear dads talk about their kids, you know, I used to say, can't wait to be an empty nester. Well, now I'm a few years in. I'm like, I just sat both my kids down and said, let me know if you want to walk home, if you want to move home and do a semester online. My daughter's like, thanks, dad, but I'm out. <laughs> and uh, 
<laughs> so yeah, I, I I I miss him. So don't don't wish. I gave a sermon in the middle of COVID, actually uh, in Nashville, when everyone was complaining about you know oh, I'm stuck at home with my family. Oh man, my kids are driving me crazy. I said the day will come you will weep. And if God would give you a year back of your life, it would be 2020 so you could get this much time with your kids. The days will come when you long for these days. Do not yeah. do not waste away. So be patient. I learned the importance of patience. It was a rich time, man. It was a rich time. Can you speak to the dad who is in that moment right now? And, and I would love for you to talk about forming men as well. Speak to the dad who feels like they don't have what it takes to do this journey with their kids. Well, I, I want you to know, don't let your your vision of the ideal stop you doing what you can. Yeah. If everything, if what I'm sounding, if what I'm saying feels like too much, don't do it then, because there's no point trying something you absolutely know you're going to fail at and feeling like crap and then just shame spiraling again. Yeah. Pick That's something good. you can do that is small, and do it slowly and just build momentum. Can you pray for one minute for each of your kids per day? And that may not sound like much, but it's like, hey, man, that's like almost half an hour a month. Well, that's real prayer, you know? And then could you consciously just say, I'm going to say something encouraging at the dinner table. I'm not going to criticize. I'm not going to talk about homework. I'm just going to, I'm going to build them up one comment a week and just start doing small things and start building momentum where you can. Um, I would also say never underestimate uh, the, the power of a father's love your kids desperately want a good relationship with you. Even if they hate you, even if you've screwed it up, all that anger is just a, sh a sign of the potency of what your relationship could be. And I would just say, just start start moving towards them consistently in small ways in love again. So good. Can you uh, just briefly talk about forming men? Yes. Um, forming men is... You know, it's we, we basically realize there's a crisis amongst men in the world today. Mm -hmm. And uh, a huge part of the primal path is to get upstream on this crisis That's to produce an, another kind of man in the world, you know. Um, Frederick Douglass says it's easier, you know, to build good men than repair broken ones. I think that I think that's I think that's true. Um Forming Men is a ministry designed to basically take men uh, on a conscious five-step process to understand who they're meant to be. So number one is formation. We help men see um, you have become who you are for a reason. You, you don't live in a neutral world you, you and you've got to have a vision of, of conscious formation. Two, you've got to understand your deformation, wounds, lies, idols, your socialization, the impact of your family, your own sin. How's this deformed you? Then uh, counterformation to follow Jesus then is to align a series of thoughts, practices, uh, and behaviors that bring you into who Jesus has called you to be and out of the brokenness of what's happened to you. Mm -hmm. Then it's transformation. It's learning to really enjoy. It's a renewed mind. It's a, it's a different motivational structure. It's surfacing subconscious beliefs that sabotage who we are, limit us, draw us back into sin, experiencing transformation. And then confirmation, which is choosing the way of cross. Uh, the way of the cross. Um, you know, one one definition of masculinity um, that I really, really like is the joyful pursuit of sacrificial responsibility. It's helping you as a man joyfully pursue sacrificial responsibility on behalf of others. And I think when when a man is like that, he's at his best. And so it's, yeah, it's basically um, almost like a discipleship journey, but with a little bit more formative rather than just content emphasis to help you yeah. understand who you're meant to be what's jacked you up, how to recover from it, and how to pursue a full heart and a full life. So, yeah, it's um, we do these super, su honestly, mate, super epic high-end retreats. I mean, they're as good as anything I've ever been to. I can't believe I get to be on them. Um, so we do, we've got four of those coming up for 2024. Uh, we just finished uh, our first course. Um, oh, we haven't finished it. We're on, uh, we've got two weeks left. Uh, so we're going to have that. We're going to roll that out for churches. And um, yeah, so it's just like a, a nonprofit that is designed to do a an updated version of the best of men's ministry while introducing some stuff into modern men's ministry we feel like has been missing and overlooked. And I just, we're going to put this in the show notes. Would love for you to check this out as well. Uh, I Firsthand experience, this stuff is just, it, it it's what we've been missing as men. And I'm just... And, and how good was that food, dude? Oh my gosh. Like... <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like I, it's it, wild. It, it was it was a little bit. I was a little bit nervous to text Christy to tell her how amazing of a time I was having and the kind of foods yes. that I was having while she was home with the kids. But I mean, she was blessing me while I was there. But still, it's like it's one of those moments where you're just like, this is amazing. Like this is, you know, uh, it was. Whew. Well, we say, we say it's you know, it's it's we are not you know I I'm, I'm a, a like a reasonably thoughtful man who passes in the middle of manhattan i'm not like a gun shooting truck i've gotten i'm not against that at all yeah but yeah, it's not yeah. your typical like men no, suck do more right. try harder that's right it's like an actual attuned awareness to the to the, like the loneliness and issues men face things that have been holding you back and how to recover their hearts so we say if you could if you could sort of do a venn diagram between jordan peterson jocko and the person of jesus we would be somewhere in there which is sort of like a super thoughtful, best of sort of psychological integration, the best of recovering discipline as a, and strength as a gift of grace, and then obviously following Jesus. We think there's some really healthy some, things somewhere in the middle. It's a of that. really great diagram. I, the impression I get of it, and this is my experience, is you know you think of David and you think of the Book of Psalms, and it's kind of like this voyeuristic look into his journal where he's shedding mm. tears all night long on his couch, and then you know, he's, you know, killing animals with his bare hands. It's, it's like this, you know, he's, he's, I look at King David as like this ability to be able to share his emotion, identify his emotion, take that to God mm. to become more like yeah. God, man after God's own heart. And at the same time, he's got these masculine traits about him that aren't defining only who he is. He's, there's this continuum that it's just so much involved there that's just beautiful and i just yeah he's that. well he is he's he's an integrated man that that's what yeah, he is yeah he's aware of his he's aware of his emotions and he also knows what to do with his strength and and also knows um, what to do with his sin i mean te yeah. teachable yes you know um you know repent re repentant uh when he's quick you know, to repent quick to repent quick to make right Saul became yeah. the victim blamed god david just said against you only have i sinned yes yeah. i mean he's that the, the, the way they responded to their sin is i actually just wrote yesterday um a, a, a series of devotions on david's repentance it's super fresh in my mind man oh yeah. that's amazing what a, what a remarkable season yeah john i just i want to um you have built a primal path. You are building forming men. You have this call to men's ministry in the days ahead. I want to close. And again, we're going to put all this stuff in the show notes for you guys. Father's Day is coming up. I would love for you to share and encourage those who are listening who maybe didn't have their dad in their lives. They're listening to this. So we've been talking mostly to the dads in this episode. We've been talking mostly to you know, saying, hey, here's how we can level up. Here's how we can, here's what it looks like to enter into our children's world and pursue them well. What about for those who didn't have a dad and they're listening to this and they're just, man, they're, they're where you were, um, where you're just going, I didn't get this. Can you s just encourage that person uh, who's listening today on this upcoming Father's Day? Yeah, I would say, so number one, I would say, man, I'm sorry. I under, I, I mean, an absent father or a, an abusive father does a, a kind of soul level damage that is as deep as any wounding I think a man can experience. So I'm sorry that people have experienced that, man. It leaves you with a kind of internal deficit. You know, it, 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 it puts sort of like a funk in your spirit where you either overcompensate or you don't know how to compensate. I mean, it's, 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 it can be a very, very challenging thing. Um, I would say this, man, um, You've got to make it, you've got a decision in your life. And here's the decision. Am I going to continue, am I going to continue this on or am I going to start a new line? Am I going to break this off and have something new? So in the Bible, sometimes you get someone and they would describe as the son of, the son of, the son of, and the most definitive thing about their life is who their father was. And then in other accounts, you see this person was the father of. And these are the people that didn't have that inheritance and that lineage to draw from. So they just decided to become fathers themselves and start something good. Wow. And I would say to you, I have met so many men who say, I may not have the tools, but I'll get the heart. And I'm just going to work to um, 
ask God to you know repair that relationship with my father as, as much as I can, as good as I can get it. I'm going to bless him and so I don't keep cursing him. Uh, and then I'm going to move forward and I'm going to do what I never got. And I think that's part of, I think that's part of the pain you'll always have to carry, but I would say use it as fuel, use the regret as fuel for something redemptive. Determine in your heart with resolve, I will not pay this forward. I will change this story in my family line. And I think when a man sort of sets his heart in that direction, the help of heaven rushes towards him. God loves to disrupt broken lives, broken lines, and release blessing where things are impossible. I'm always reminded of uh, King Josiah. Josiah's grandfather was the most evil king in Israel's history. And his dad, Josiah's dad, was so bad that his servants assassinated him in the palace. But it says that Josiah set his heart to seek the Lord. And so he didn't have any reference points of what it looked like. It had been a hundred years since he had there was any reference point of godliness. And you know what he says? He just calls David his father. He just says, like my I'm seeking the God of my father, David. He just looked at other mentors who had the fruit that he wanted, and he said, I'm just going to consciously choose to graft myself in, take that spiritual heritage if I don't have it in the physical, and I'm just going to lead out of that. And I would just say that. Go back, look at other mentors, look at other leaders, figure out the fruit you want, put that stuff together, and live out of that inheritance. And you know what happens with Josiah? It's just nobody before or after turned to the Lord with all of their might like Josiah did. It was a one man, one generation revival by seeking the Lord. And you can do that if you set your heart to turn to the Lord. And uh, I think you can do remarkable things as a result of it. So good that Nathan is the son of John. I would love for you to tell a story from his perspective, some feedback he's given you as a son who has been through this journey with you. Well, I, I'm sure my son would say, my dad is not perfect. Uh, I think my, I'm sure my son would say, when my dad is stressed, he gets pissy, particularly if he's preaching, so we leave him alone on <laughs> Sunday mornings. I mean, I'm sure there's so many things uh, I love it. he would say about it. what I didn't get right. Um, I, I'll tell you one moment that was really meaningful for me. And again, you're getting the highlights, man. I mean, I've made so many mistakes. I'm not the best dad in the room. This, I mean... I, I, all I've done is be intentional. And that's the book is called The Intentional Father. Just move towards your kids in love. And so much of what happens is going to be God's grace. But my son uh, went off to YWAM and um, he, we're having this debrief conversation. He said this to me. He said, Dad, when I was at YWAM, we we're having a conversation about father wounds. And I was like, oh, gosh, here we go. You know, here's the thing I, I have not been looking forward to. And he said, a lot of these guys were just grieving because there was all these memories in their life they were meant to have with a dad. And they were just hurt because I didn't have them. And he said, I had this realization as I listened, every memory you're supposed to have, I have that because you're intentional. Thank you. Wow. Dude, tears. Wow. And again, he didn't say because you're perfect. You know, I probably showed up pretty sloppy at a lot of those times, but. I was like in the room, tired, exhausted, with with a with a forced smile, but like, yo, I'm here for this, man. And I would just say, keep showing up, man. Show up with what you got. If you're tired, show up tired. If you if you're struggling with your faith, show up struggling with your faith. But don't let your struggles cancel out what your kids need. They want whatever you got. Give them what you have, and you'll be amazed at how much that is enough. So, John, this is why you're a delight. You give us the nuggets, but you also are humble in your own journey, and you give us you give it with a guilt free drop. You give it with like, "Hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm pissy. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm human." And it's sadly true, yes. and yet, and yet, here we all are. And so, I think that's that's the encouragement for all of us is to be able to keep moving forward, no matter what we're experiencing, what we're going through, what our kids desire us. Our kids just want us oh. to show up, and uh, that's for me. I'm just thinking about ways I need to go show up a little bit better than I have been. And uh, I think all of us, doesn't matter who we are, we're, we're experiencing that. And so I just, I thank you, John, for taking the time to, to be here. Loved uh, to, it, mate. To do so this. good. Thank you. I just, I, I was so encouraged to, I've been getting more time with you and just in, into your space and into your curriculum and all these things. And I was just, when when you see, when you experience something that you're growing from, 
I just get mm. excited to share it with other people. Mm. And our podcast mm. is our family. Our listeners are our family. And I couldn't wait to share it with, with our family, our podcast family. And so thank you for taking the time and, and sharing with us f- firsthand what you're doing. It means a lot. No worries. Thank you, mate. It's always a joy to chat. Absolutely. Until next week, keep in mind that the greatest red carpet you will walk is through your front door.